My name is Wyatt, and my goal is to find out as much as I can about energy. What exactly is energy, and how is it transferred from one place to another? We probably all know what energy is, but it might be hard to put into words. We may be able to give examples of energy, like lightning or the sun, and we know some things give us energy, like Gatorade or sugary candies, like Skittles and Sour Patch Kids. But what makes these things contain energy, and how do they give energy to us? Well, I, I knew I could only find the answer from one person, my friend Shivani, who happens to be an expert on energy. Hey Wyatt! Hi Shivani, so what can you tell me about energy? Oh wow! Well, the basic definition of energy is the capacity to do work. Everything requires work. Breathing, eating, even me talking to you right now takes energy. And there's only a certain amount of energy in the world. However, energy can be transferred from one place to another. I think the best way to explain this would be to show you. Let's start over here. Wait, so how will an empty field help us better understand what energy is? Well, let me show you. My friend Angie, who's on the other side of this field right now, has decided to help us show you how energy can be transferred. The way it's being demonstrated right now is through sound. Hey, Angie, can you hear me? Wow, Shivani, you're louder than I thought. Okay, Angie, why don't you come over here now? Okie dokie. So, Shivani, Angie, how is yelling a transfer of energy? Well, when you speak, you send out vibrations that are made of energy, and those vibrations travel through the air to another person's ear. There is more ways than one to transfer energy by sound than just yelling. An engine can emit a sound, and even when a broom sweeps the ground, there is constant energy being transferred by sound. Wow, that's fascinating. Is there any other way energy is transferred? Well, there are lots of ways. Why don't we show him how heat transfers energy, since it's pretty chilly outside. Howdy, everybody. Hey Elliot, Shivani and I were just about to learn how energy is transferred by heat. Andrew was just here a moment ago, but she got really cold and has to warm up for a bit. So Shivani, what are we doing in a kitchen and what does a kitchen have to do with heat? Ooh, ooh, I know this one. Can I answer this one, Shivani? Sure, go ahead, Elliot. So basically when you're in a kitchen and you want to, usually you're going to be doing cooking or baking, both of those things require heat. Exactly, and we're going to be able to see how heat is transferred by boiling water. Wow, I can feel that from here. Does that mean heat is being transferred to me as well? Exactly. You see, heat is being transferred from the stove to the pot, where it's then transferred to the water, where it's then transferred to the air, and then it's being transferred to you. Wow, that's, that's a lot of steps. So let me get this straight. The, the water is being boiled, which then cre creates steam, which is what I feel now. Exactly right. That's a good way to put it, Wyatt. So, Shivani, what's next? So, I was thinking we could talk about one of the most common ways that energy is used. Electric current. Wait, so do you mean like a phone charger or something? Well, that's just one example, but yeah. Electric current is one of the most fundamental types of energy used in almost all modern technology. The lights in your house, your phone, some medical equipment, the air conditioner, all of those use electric current. Wow, that's really cool. So, how does that work? Well, I think I can give you an example. When I plug in this phone, you can see that it starts to charge. And that's because the, power, the energy from the outlet is transferred to the phone through this charger. And this charger uses an electric current to do that. Well, so where does the energy from the outlet come from? Well, it comes from lots of places. It can come from solar panels, windmills, and burning coal. And when you use those things, it can be turned into electricity, which powers almost everything in the world. The world? Wow, I didn't know electric current was that important to everyday life. Speaking of everyday life, I have to go study for an exam. See you guys later. Bye, Elliot. Ta-ta okay. for now. So, Shivani, do you think Angie's feeling better now? Why don't we go check? So, Angie, are you feeling better? Yeah, actually, thank you. So, we were just about to talk about the last way we're going to talk about how energy is transferred, by light. I think I may know something about this. So you're saying that things like lightning or the sun are like just pure energy, right? Actually, there is no such thing as pure energy. But yes, lightning, the sun, and the light bulbs we use inside are all good examples of energy from light. 
Is there any way for light being able to be transferred into energy? Yeah, of course. You see, solar panels can be used where light is transferred to electricity, and also plants convert light to nutrients so they can grow. Oh, wow, those both seem very important. Well, thank you, Shivani and Angie, for helping me learn about how energy is transferred, and please send my thanks to Elliot. Will do. As I've gone through this journey, I learned a lot about energy, but was still struggling to put what energy is into words. And then I realized that energy is everything. It's in everything and it's literally what makes the world turn and what allows humanity to thrive. It is in constant use and it's being transferred to all of our surroundings and even into us. And I don't know about you, but I love learning about energy and I like to express my love for it by doing my favorite dance, the electric slide. It's electric!